Right then, so this is an overview of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so I'll start off with a brief um, bit of information about the UK data service and who we are, and then talk a bit about survey data and then documentation and tips. Then I'm going to do a tour of UK data service website. And, and if you do have any questions, do put them in at any point in the Q&A box and we will answer them later. OK, so who are we? Well, we are a resource funded by the Economic and Social Research Council. And via our website, um, we are a single point of access to a wide range of um, social sciences data that, that people can use. And in addition to this, we provide support, training and guidance about um, using our data. So what data do we hold? Well, this um, session is about UK surveys, but we do have other kinds of data. So um, you can see we have longitudinal data, which is data that is similar, in fact, to the UK surveys, but with longitudinal data, you um, every time the survey is run, they, they look at the same, rather they go back to the same people each time. We have international databases, UK census data, which has been collected every 10 years, and a small collection of business and qualitative data. So UK surveys, um, they tend to be data about individuals or households and they are often commissioned by government departments and conducted by um, large organisations such as the Office for National Statistics or the National Centre for Social Research, otherwise known as NATSEN. And each of these data sets includes um, key characteristics such as, um, well, for individuals, things like gender, um, level of education, etc. And they also have um, large sample sizes. So that means they tend to have sample sizes of around 3,000 plus. Some of them have up to 40,000 that they interview, so quite large. Um, these are nationally representative, which means that you can use the sample to create estimates for the whole population. And um, the ones that I'm talking about here are the repeated cross-sectional surveys. Um, they tend to have the same or a very similar questionnaire with a new sample of people every time it's run. And some are run annually, some are run more often than that, um, and um, others of them are run less often than that, but they are often repeated regularly. OK, so um, what do we, we get from survey data? We get survey microdata. Microdata looks like this. So if you look at the top half of the screen, um, the, the data are displayed in rows and columns. And each row represents the information from a single person in this instance. And each column represents the, um, the actual um, information, so to speak. So the, the first column is QR, sorry, Q health R. And that's talking about whether or not a person has good health. Um, our sex would be gender, usually, age, probably an age group, etc. OK, and if you look at the bottom half of the screen, you can see, for example, that the first person there says they have good health and they are female and they're age 25 to 44, etc. OK, so um, how do you get the data? Well, um, generally speaking, you would download the data from the website and that comes in whole data sets and is included in it is the documentation and the documentation you can also see on the website anyway. And it tends to come in particular formats. So those designed for SPSS data and it often also comes as tab um, format. An alternative is to access it via Nestar, which I will talk about later. I will show you when we do the, um, the website tour. And what this does is it allows you to browse the variables and also to see the metadata, which is the information about the data. And um, you can also, with Nestar, do simple data analyses and export tables and graphs and download subsets of the data. OK, so 
Key topics um, are shown here, and you can see beneath each topic there are some key data sets that cover those topic areas. These are not the only topic areas um, that, that we have. We have a lot of other, basically any topic that you can think of that is a social sciences topic, we in all likelihood have some data about. Um, so for example, the employment and work, um, we have the labor force survey, which I'll talk about briefly later, and the annual population survey, which um, despite having a completely different name is in fact based on the labor force survey plus um, extra um, surveys that they run. Um, and then there are also international, um, cross-national surveys, such as the European Working Conditions Survey. Okay, so um, now you should see on your screen a poll in a moment. So um, which of these variables do you think we hold? Do we have total daily expenditure for two weeks, surveyor reports, blood samples, number of sexual partners and COVID-19 test results? You can choose more than one. Um, so we'll just wait. Um, for people to, um, to to answer the poll. Okay, shall we end the poll now, Jill, and share the results? Okay then, so, um, yes, we do have total daily expenditure for two weeks. That's the one that most people have chosen. Um, I see not many people think that there are blood samples and um, some of you have selected the other three. And of course, you can imagine I'm going to say this was a trick question because the answer is that all of these do appear on some of our surveys. OK, so the living costs and food surveys includes um, a food diary um, where people keep um, a note of everything that they, uh, they, they buy um, over that two week period. There's the English housing survey, which does include a surveyor's report. Health Survey for England includes a nurse visit to a subsample of participants where they take blood and saliva and height and weight measures. The um, National uh, Survey for Sexual Attitudes and Lifestyle asks detailed questions about sexual experiences, behaviours and views. And Understanding Society um, also asks the, the COVID questions are um, in the COVID waves, and these include test results, vaccination, infection, etc. Okay, so that's a huge variety of different kinds of data that's also collected in UK surveys. So, a couple of examples of some commonly used surveys. The British Social Attitude Survey um, looks at public attitudes across Britain, and it's good for looking at patterns of continuity and change over time because it is an annual survey that has been run every year apart from two since 1983. The sample is approximately 3,000 people every year and um, it's made up of core questions which include background and classificatory questions and these questions are asked in all or most years. And in addition, it has a series of modules on various social, economic, political and moral issues. And some of these, as again, are asked very regularly and some of them are asked intermittently. OK, so we have another poll on gender equality. So the question is, what percentage of people believed in traditional gender roles in 2017? So as you can see on the screen, 48% people believed that essentially women should stay at home and look after the children and the man should go out and work and earn the money um, in 1987. So as you can see from the, the little graph um, sort of pictogram thing that, that the numbers have clearly gone down. What proportion, where have they gone down to by 2017, which was I think the last time that this question was asked. Okay, so 28% is pretty popular. Some are saying 38, few 18, and just a few of you selecting 8%. Okie doke, shall we end the poll, Jill, and look at the results? 
Yeah, so they, they stayed pretty much as I said. So most people think it's about 28%. And um, let's get back to this. There we go, 8%. So essentially those attitudes have kind of fallen off a cliff since it was asked first in 1987. Okay, so labour force survey. So this is another very commonly used survey. Um, and it's um, produced by the Office for National Statistics, and it is the main source of data about the labour market in the UK, and it measures employment, unemployment, economic activity, and a lot of other related topics, such as the kind of occupation you have, training, hours of work, and a variety of personal characteristic of um, yourself and household members aged 16 years and above. And this is um, a household survey. Um, the quarterly labour force survey began in 1992 and approximately 60,000 people are interviewed a quarter. However, it did exist prior to that. It started in 1971 as an annual survey and you can still get the earlier data. Um, but obviously you want to take with a slight pinch of salt the um, trends over time a little bit because the, the, the survey was done in a slightly different way given that it was an annual survey then. So the, um, the data sets um, the, uh, since 1992 are quarterly, um, which um, you can get at the individual or the household level. And there are also longitudinal data sets which link five quarters, uh, up to five quarters or two quarters, um, because the way it's arranged is that every, um, basically a household will join and stay in for five quarters before dropping out and being replaced. And in every quarter, roughly a fifth of the respondents are new households. So that's how that works. And if you want to look at the chart over on the, the right hand side, you can see that it is very useful for looking at um, uh, how, how trends over time. This, this, in fact, is from the Office of National Statistics um, website, and it does start in 1971, and it shows the total actual weekly hours worked in millions um, amongst UK population. You can see the, the big crashing numbers over COVID. OK, and looking at another survey, the Health Survey for England, um, this uh, covers general health, long-standing illness and smoking and alcohol use. And um, there is a core questionnaire plus a focus topic for the particular year as it's run annually. Um, and it has been run annually since 1991. And there are currently about 13,000 interviews a year. And as well as the questionnaire, there are also um, physical measurements and the analysis of blood sample, as we've already seen. Um, and there are reports that you can find on the health survey website. Um, and you can see over on the right hand side some information um, that's derived from the 2018 health survey for England. OK, so a little bit about survey documentation. So, um, obviously, when you create your own survey, you would know exactly what you did and how you did it. But when you're using a survey that has been created by someone else, it's very important to look at the documentation because that will tell you what they did and how they created the data. And you can't really understand and use the data without having that information. OK, so um, what we've got here is an example from the Understanding Society COVID study from 2020 to 21. But you'll see if you go um, to the website that pretty much all um, documentation sort of looks something like this, although obviously they do vary from study to study. Um, the key documents that you will usually find is a user guide or some similar document that summarizes the design, um, the sampling that was used, the derived variables, how they were created. Um, so derived variables are the ones that are created from the variables um, that were based on the raw data from the, the survey. Um, how to use survey weights, which I'll talk about briefly in a moment. 
um, how the, the survey was funded, how to link to the main survey where relevant, um, and details of special access data sets, again, where relevant. And there should always be a questionnaire for every part of um, the, uh, the survey. There will be a data dictionary, which is created by the UK Data Service as part of the ingest process. And what that does is it lists which variables are in the data set and gives some extra information about how they're coded, for example. And also there's participant information. OK, so um, understanding society questionnaire, here's an example of one. So it tends to show the questions that were asked, um, the variable name and the routing information, which means the conditions on whether the question is asked, because obviously not all questions are going to be relevant to all um, respondents. And sometimes um, it, surveys deliberately ask um, only certain sections of respondents certain questions so that they can cover more questions. But of course, that leads to slightly small, smaller sample sizes for those questions. So that's something else to watch out for. OK. And, um, there is a resources tab. If you look over on the right hand side for of this, the resources tab provides links to things like the case studies that analyze the data. Um, publications doesn't include all possible publications, it's usually just a small number. Details of related studies and data sets and other relevant information. Okay, and just a brief note about survey weights. And that is that most surveys do require you to use survey weights to make the sample data better represent the population. And those surveys that need um, you to use survey weights will provide the weighting variable or variables in the data set. And the details of those variables, how they were created and how you're supposed to use them are generally included in the survey documentation. So you should be able to find that quite easily. And um, in case you're new to this, um, survey weights are quite easy to use if you use the statistic package like SPSS data or R. And if you'd like more information about what weighting is, we have various things. We have a uh, what is weighting guide, a short introduction to using weight in social surveys video and um, various guides to um, commonly used software, which also includes how to use weighting. Okay, so how do you get the data? What are the conditions under which you can get it? So there are three levels of access. Um, there's open access, which has very few restrictions. Um, and in terms of survey data, there are only a small number of teaching data sets available um, from the UK Data Service, which are open access data. And um, teaching data sets are ones to very small cut down versions of um, the larger data sets. And they're, they're generally um, slightly altered in terms of, for example, um, grouping some of the categories together so that they can be shared as open access. And they tend to only have maybe 10 or 20 variables. So those really only to be used for teaching. The majority of the data that you would want to use for research or work or for your studies would be the um, safeguarded data. And to get that data, most of it is under the end user license. And you just need to register with the data service and then agree to the conditions. And then you can download and use the license data straight from the website. There may occasionally be additional conditions. And there is a much smaller collection of safeguarded data, which is under the special license. And that does require a few extra hoops to jump through. But the vast majority is under the end user license and you can just download that from the website after registration. OK, and the last section is um, access condition is the controlled data. Um, 
So to get controlled data, you would need to make an application and have it checked. And then you would access it through a secure access agreement and usually through a physical or virtual secure environment. So ours is called Se Secure Lab. And the difference between controlled and safeguarded data is essentially that there tends to be more detail in controlled data sets. So these might be variables that are on sensitive topics, for example, information about um, people who've left care, for example. I think you would not really likely find that information under an end user license, but it might be available under a controlled um, insecure lab. Um, another key difference is that lower levels of geography tend not to be available under the end user license and maybe not the special license either. So, for example, um, Generally speaking, for end user license data, the lowest level of geography you can get is the regional level. So northwest of England, London is a region, um, Wales, Scotland, southwest, etc. Um, and you can get down potentially to postcode level if you apply for the controlled access version of data, if, if one such exists. OK, right then. So. OK, now um, let's look at the website. OK, so I will go there. Right. OK, so um, so the, the website is just ukdataservice.ac.uk. And um, it's set up so that you have the, the main things you'd want to do, which is to find data, potentially deposit data, or learn about using the data or come to our training and events over on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, there's information about the data service, latest news, impact, which essentially is how people have used the data, our help pages and contact. And you can also search the website and log in here at the top right. OK, so let's look at finding data. Well, you could type in just on the front page or let's go to find data. Okay, so, right. The options here are, as I say, either you can search by clicking into the box and searching for something, or you can browse to the data. So let's have a look at the browsing. So you can browse by theme. So each of these are common themes. Um, that, that people might want to search for. Again, this does not cover every single possible topic that might be of interest to you. But if you are new to using data, you might be interested to look at these. Note that these are not all survey data that's included. This includes a, a range of different kinds of data. Okay, if we go back, we can see that you can browse by data type and um, UK surveys or cross-national surveys might be the ones that you're interested in if you're interested in these kinds of data. And there's also um, links to teaching data sets and more teaching data sets or other ways of browsing. Okay then, so let's, um, let's go to, um, let's in fact do a search. Let's search for crime. This will take me through to the uh, catalogue, data catalogue search results page. So you can see at the top here is the search bar. And you've got search tips here if you want some more information about how to do searches, the kinds of things that you can and, and can't do. And on the left hand side here, we have filters. And on the right hand side, we have results, which you can um, show by various numbers per page or by relevance or some other way of sorting. And note here, you have studies. The first tab, the default tab, um, tells you studies um, that come up, say, for my search for crime. And that's what we have here. So each of these is an individual study that has come up. And in terms of surveys, particularly series, you might be more interested to look at the other tab, which is the series tab up here on the uh, towards the top. Uh, left, but the second tab, and that will take you immediately to the the um, survey um, series pages. 
Okay, so let us go to a catalogue page. So Crime Survey for England and Wales, let's choose that one. And this is the series page. And in the series page, you have um, frequently asked questions if you're completely new to the survey and some resources, again, if you're completely new to the survey. Right, okay, not, okay. And that shows you the um, other surveys that are related, for example. But you're probably most interested to access the data. So once you're in the series page, you can see there's two kinds of two versions. You can get this, which is the, um, the end user license version. So the kind that you can download after registration. OK, and then you have the secure access. So you can usually spot end user license data by the fact that it doesn't say what kind of access it is. Normally, the other kinds of access, if it's open access or secure or special license, it says so. OK, so let's look at the end user license version. OK, so let's choose the most recent one. So obviously over COVID, they moved from the usual face to face crime survey for England and Wales to the telephone operated crime survey for England and Wales. So let's click on that one. OK, and this takes me through to the, um, the, the catalogue page. OK, so we're on the details tab by default. So that's the first tab. And this has a lot of information, which I think is worth reading this, particularly if you're new to a particular survey. So it tells you the title, the study number, which is the study number that has been provided by the UK Data Service. And it says how the data can be accessed. And there's more information on the access page as well. OK, and the, um, it tells you about the series and who created it. There's a bit of information here about who collected the data and sponsored the collection and the citation and copyright information. There's a bit of information about topics and you could use the thesaurus search on keywords. I think the most interesting thing often is the abstract because that tells you everything that you might not know about a survey when you're new to it, about the background, and why it was created, for example, and some related surveys. So if you were to read all of this, it would explain why the telephone operated Crime Survey for England came about and so on. And a little bit about the history. It talks a bit about the secure access version of the data and some new methodology for capping the number of incidents, crime incidents and so on. And then the main topics, Bit of information here. Coverage and methodology is below. So this is a nice way of um, getting some kind of overview of, of the survey without reading all the documentation. And then at the bottom, we have the addition history. OK, if we scroll back up to the top, um, we can see then the very important documentation tab. So here we have a user guide and then there are two technical reports. Um, there's the um, citation, the data dictionaries created by the UK Data Service and a readme file. So if we look at the user guide, okay, so you can see that's been created by the data producer. Okay, and it basically gives a lot of background information, talks about the methodology, sample design, etc. It talks about the data sets that are available, variable names, etc. Gives you some information about analysis and some methodological limitations and so on. Okay. Um, so you can you can search that using control F to go to the relevant bit that that interests you. OK, um, this particular data set also has a couple of technical reports, which I think covers a lot of the same information, um, but probably in a bit more detail. So this has been the data were, I think, collected by Kantar. And so they have um, also produced technical reports. And again, this will include probably the same information, but possibly in more detail. 
Okay, and let's just keep going. Data dictionaries. So what this is doing is it's creating a zip file and I can open that. And if I double click on it, that's a Word document. I'm just taking a moment to start up. And there we go. Okay, right then. And so this is what a typical data dictionary looks like. So there's information about the number of variables, the number of cases and then variable level information. So the first variable, second, third, tells you what the variable name is and tells you what that means. Um, and it also shows the coding for, for that variable. Okay, so let's go back to the website. And the final thing to mention is the readme file, um, which just contains a bit of um, information about how the uh, the, the data set was ingested. Most of the time, I think this may not be of particular relevance to you, but occasionally when um, a variable is unexpectedly missing, for example, but for good reason, that might appear here in the readme file um, if we've got a lot of queries about that. Um, so it's kind of worth always checking, I think, the readme file just to see if there's anything um, interesting in there if you're using the data. Okay, we have the resources tab. So here are a few case studies. So those are examples. Publications and reports. Um, there are a lot more that use these data than just these two. Um, other studies, so you can find related studies and any other information. Okay, so these are useful websites related to the data. And then accessing the data. So we click on access and you will see the access conditions here. Okay, um, and you can't add to the account without logging in. So I'm going to log in. And what you do is you are taken to a login page and you can type the, the name of your organization if you are at a UK college or university, or if you've been here before, they might remember you because I'm based at the University of Manchester so it recalls that I'm from there. If you are not based at a UK college or university that's fine just click on my organisation is not listed and there will be more information about how you can register which essentially means requesting a username uh, which does take up to five working days to process um, but once you've got that then you can just um, sign on as everyone else can. Okay, so University of Manchester. So I will log in as me. So just using my University of Manchester normal login and password. Okay, and it's thinking about it. And there we are. So what it's done is it's taken me back to the same page that I was on before, where I can access the data. But you notice now at the top here on the top right, it now um, allows me to go to my account or to log out. Okay, so let's go down and add these data to my account. So I click on add to account. Okay, great. So now I can go to my account or I could continue to browse, but let's go to my account and download the data. So this is my account. My account probably looks a tiny bit busier than many accounts because I work for the data service. So I have a lot of projects and former projects and data and so on. But essentially, um, when you have um, added a data set to your, um, your account, you will be able to find it here. Uh, you should be able to, oh, not finding it. Let's go for a different one. Let's go for that one. Um, here and what this is doing is asking you to um, select the data sets that you're interested in and I oh know I know why you couldn't find it it's the telephone operated one isn't it yes there we are okay well, let's choose the correct one and then add to project okay and you can add it to an existing project if you have one or you can create a new project Let's just show how to create a new project. So you need to choose a suitable title. You would select the type. 
Now, for research purposes or um, student work or um, at most purposes, in fact, are non-commercial. And so you could select that. Um, if you're using it for teaching, then obviously select teaching. If you are going to use it for commercial purposes, so in other words, you're going to use the data essentially to, to make money, um, then you would register this as a commercial project. OK, and then you would add the abstract, which has to be a minimum of 100 characters, and then you would create the project. So it's that simple. However, let's go back to um, the data. Um, let's see. Sorry, if I go back to data and add that to a project that I already have. OK, so I've got a project that already exists. OK, and then I will add it to that project. And my Internet is working slowly because I'm doing a live demo, clearly. It's not normally slow like this. <laughs> Thinking about it. Right. OK. Oh, doesn't seem to like that. OK, so let's find. That's probably because I've got so many data sets. This won't be as bad as this when you do this yourself. OK, here we are. So our actions that I could do here, I could download the data or I can go back to the catalogue page or I can just click on the little button on the right hand side and then download the selected. So it's very simple and I can select which version I want. OK, so I can have the SPSS version, this data or the tab version. And I just click on, say, that one, download selected. And you can see on the top right, it's create, opening it. That's it, it's a zip file. And then I double click on that and I have a zip file. And I have documentation in this folder and the data themselves are here and that's the document that's the data sorry itself okay so that was quite simple really to to get access to the data now um let's go back to finding data um so i'll search again so there as I said at the beginning, there are ways of refining your search you know, using topics which are defined. Um, the data type, such as UK survey data, um, the access level that you're interested in. And you can also, um, when you type it in here, you can see that other people have suggested other um, things that you might wish to search for. Or you can do a keyword search, which should cut down the number of results that you get because the keywords are signed by the data service and by producers specifically for that particular kind of information. OK, so let us now look at Nestle. So I'm now going to search for a different data set. This is the British Social Attitudes data that I talked about earlier. And again, we've gone to the series page here. So you can see all the different data sets available. And if we click on access data, now you can see there is only an end user license version of the BSA. There are no other versions. So if we click on the button at the right, it should bring up the different ones. And we can either go straight to Nestar this way, or we can go to the catalogue page and access data on the right hand side and scroll down. And here we can add the data to your account. So that's adding the whole data set as I just demonstrated, or you can go in using Nestar to have a look at the data online. OK, so this is what Nestar looks like. And essentially, we have a list of all the different data sets that are included in the Nestar catalogue. Not everything is included in Nestar. It tends to be it is survey data and census microdata. So that's the data that um, is a sample of the entire 
UK census that has been anonymized um, and that looks a bit like survey data. Um, and you have some unrestricted access data sets at the bottom and some teaching data sets as well. Um, now, because I came in via the um, BSA 2021, Nestar has gone straight there to that data set. If I were to click on metadata, I would get more information about um, the documentation again, which I think you can already see on the uh, catalog page. If I click on variable description, this is where this becomes useful. So I could click on internet usage and you see that there are three variables here. So on average, how often would you say you use sorry, say you access the internet for personal use. And what this is doing is, is showing you the, um, the, the kind of, in a sense, the, the raw data or the real results from the raw data. So these are unweighted um, frequencies from the, from the data for that particular variable. And this can be quite nice if you haven't got a computer that's powerful enough to download the data, say you're using a very old computer, or you just want to have a quick glance at a variable, or if you want to teach your students about survey data, but you don't want to teach them to use a software um, at that moment in time anyway, you just want to talk about coding and the more basic end of things. This could be very useful. It gives you the coding, so the different values and the categories that relate to each of those values and the number and the percentages of those who selected them and the number of valid and missing cases. Okay, um, so let's look at some other ones. So derived variables, it's the same sort of thing. But what is your sex? And again, here we have roughly 55% were female and 43%, 44% male. Okay, so what else can you do with this? Now, everything I've done so, so far, you can do without logging in. However, everything else, you do need to be logged in. It's just the UK data service login. I should say that Nestar is... Um, it only works in Firefox, or it tends to only work in Firefox, certainly for the login sections. Um, and you also may see that it's a little bit, um, um, yeah, it, it doesn't always work as you expect entirely. So we are in the process of getting an alternative to Nestar, something that will do something similar and be more reliable. But it does work for the time being. But like I say, if you're planning to use it, go into Firefox and I suggest you log in before you start using it so that you can use all these um, other um, aspects. So you can create cross tabs. So let's see, let's look at internet usage. Uh, so I'll add that to the row. Um, this is where we have the login issue. OK, and it's just asking me to agree to some conditions. That's the end user license conditions. And now here we have the same information as we had before, but in a table. But now we can also weight the data. So Nestar knows which are the weighting variables and we can move that across and then click on OK. Um, asked me to log that's there we go and now these are the weighted results okay and we can see that the weight is on because it says so at the bottom okay and you could do a cross tab if you wanted to so should we add um sex to a column and again we have to accept the conditions and here we are right so we have female male prefer not to answer total and these are the percentages OK, so if you're interested in this, you can play around with it yourself and see all the different things you can do. Um, you could produce some various um, bar charts based on the data that you've added. You can do various things. Um, you can also um, select subsets of the data and you can compute your own variables and so on. You can also 
do other analyses like correlation and regression. I have to say I wouldn't use this for regression. Um, you could use it for correlation if you want to, however. OK, so that's um, briefly Nestar. OK, let's go back to the UK data set. Right then. So there's um, one more thing I wanted to show you before I just show you the, um, the whole website. Some of the way of finding data, which might interest you, is um, what this main catalogue search is doing is searching the essentially the information that you would see in the, the main catalogue page. So that is the title and the abstract and other similar things about the about the data. Um, the variable and question bank is a different way of searching. Um, so it's searching specifically about the vegetable, sorry, the variables and the questions. So for example, say you're interested in bus travel and you're interested in opinions about bus travel, BSA, you could search for that. So, that's not worked, has it? But occupational classification. Well, yes. Well, no doubt bus is in there somewhere, but that's not giving us very useful information, is it? Um, okay. Maybe reason you, you don't have a job. Um, okay. So this has found a variety of different things. None of them actually related to buses, but um, but anyway, you can you can see that this could be useful to search for um, specific things that are of interest to you. But as we're demonstrating here, you have to be careful what you select, otherwise you end up with a lot of stuff that perhaps wasn't what you were after. OK, um, and that was all I wanted to show you really about searching for data. Um, a couple of quick things. As I said, if you are collecting your own data at any point in your, your career, you can deposit it with the UK Data Service. So have a look at that information if, if you're thinking about that. Even if you're at the start of your um, collection, it's a really good idea to think long term about what you would do about sharing it. And this is a good place to come for information. The Learning Hub has information about how to use survey data as well as other kinds of data and also about how to manage your, your research data if you are collecting your own. The training and events calendar shows upcoming events, but it also shows past events if you want to look at um, information about past events, which often includes slides um, and, and recordings from events. The about page is about the data service and news um, is, is what it sounds like. Impact is um, how the different um, uh, data sets have been used. So that's quite nice to look at. The thing that's most likely to be relevant if you're new to the data service is the help pages. There's some really nice information here, the frequently asked questions really. And something that's very important is near the bottom here, there is help desk contact information. So the UK Data Service runs a, an email help desk and you can contact us by clicking on the, um, say you wanted access and general inquiry. Okay, you would fill in this um, web form with your information and submit it to us and it goes onto our help desk system. And the query will find its way to the person who's best able to answer your question. And um, in relation to surveys, we're always happy to answer questions about how to find data, how to find particular variables if you're struggling, having looked at the documentation. Um, if you spot anything you think might be wrong with the data. Um, if you um, just want some general help in general with, with using surveys. But what we are not able to do is to do your analyses for you. So, um, however, we are willing to kind of talk a bit about using weights, for example, if, if you're new to that. Um, OK, and I think that was everything I wanted to talk about. 